Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video it's going to be about things I wish I knew at the start of my candle making journey uh, that I know now. So my name is Matthew, I run Russell Barn Candles, a candle business and also a supply business. I've been in the industry for just over nine years now so as a candle maker and in the supply business for about two years now. And this is going to be uh, some of my knowledge that I've gained and that I wish I knew at the start of my, my journey. Um, so very beneficial for people starting off in the scented market. Um, so probably the first point to talk about would be um, storage or more, maybe more so the amount of stuff that you might underestimate that you need. Um, it soon becomes a sort of a uh, storage dilemma, let's put it that way. Um, depends how big you want to get into it obviously. Uh, the bigger you want to get into it the more things you will need just in terms of buying things in bigger bulk to get the prices down a little bit and then where to store them so having appropriate storage space um, is something really to consider um, again you know uh, just in a corner of a room that can be fine to start off with but then as you grow and get bigger and get more items um, maybe even a room just for that just for those items uh, will become necessary so um, it might not seem that important right now to you, but storage um, is something to consider. So point two will be uh, test, test, test. And what does that mean? That basically means when you're brand new, you haven't gained any knowledge yet. So you might be in the beginner groups and stuff like that, and reading stuff on Googles and watching obviously YouTube videos. But your knowledge um, from things that you know instinctively is not built in yet. So it really is a case of test, test, test. Make candles or make wax melts and test them. Actually test them yourself. Don't have an intention to make something first of all and then go off and try and sell it. Because you don't know how good your products are. You don't know if they really work. Um, you don't know maybe more so about how good your ingredients are in terms of a quality ingredient, which is highly important. I'll talk about that later on. Um, so make stuff and actually be prepared to test it you know don't be so um, restrictive let's say on using up ingredients so a lot of people they are very tight on using their ingredients themselves they just want to buy some wax buy some oil make a product and then sell it but you you haven't learned anything yet you haven't tested your product you don't know what where you for if they work um, also from a safety standard in terms of candles um, so be prepared to test a lot and that can take a long time um, especially if you're making candles that could take anywhere between six months or longer um, don't think that making candles is easy it's very tricky making wax melts is fairly easy um, so yeah if you're going to start off probably start off with wax melts um, that doesn't take too long to master um, if you're prepared to put the time in, obviously. Um, so start off with wax melts, get those understood. So it's all to do with temperature control, controlling the temperatures of, of the, the wax and timing of when to add the oil at the right temperatures. So that is highly important. So test, 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 make, make, make. Be prepared to spend some time, uh, let's just say round it up to six months on making stuff, testing it yourself, and then be prepared to go to go on uh, onto the sales side of it. So don't be worried about um, taking your time. So point three, I would probably say what is heavily underestimated, and probably I under I underestimated at the start as well, all those years back, um, is the cost. How much you are likely to be spending. Um, it, it's got a lot more expensive now uh, since COVID and the shortages of wax and increases in fragrance oil manufacturing costs obviously that has had a push on effect now to the price that the consumer faces so the cost has gone up but it's a costly hobby slash business to get into you know it's not um it's not a couple hundred pounds and then you've got a thriving business it, it, it's you know it, we're talking thousands of pounds you know it, it depends on how big you want to go because obviously there is a, a scale to everything but be prepared to spend more than what you might be thinking. Um, yeah, so that's something to, uh, I think it's what most people underestimate is how much 
you're going to be spending. Um, you can do all, the, all your research on costings and stuff, but you get through a lot of product quite quickly. So be prepared that the costs might be more than what you're planning them to be. So on the topic of costs, it's not to your advantage to shop around and look for the cheapest ingredients out there. So the cheapest wax, the cheapest oil, you know, the cheapest of everything. That in the long run can be your deficit, you know, the reason why you fail. Um, if you quickly don't um, understand that there is a massive difference in low quality products to high quality products. The market is swamped with low quality products sadly and that's got worse in the last year or so um, with new suppliers coming in but offering a very low quality, very low price. And as to begin, uh, beginners to the industry, that can be very attractive seeing waxes and oils at very cheap prices um, or low prices let's say, um, but the quality is not there so you're really going to struggle to make a a good scented wax, uh, wax melt, and definitely impossible to make a good quality candle, um, just because of the way the, the oil is not going to work with the flame, the, the aroma is going to burn off as soon as the oil touches the flame, with the low quality oils. So thinking that you are, if you're just shopping online and looking for the cheapest products you can find, um, step back for a minute and think what am I really going to be getting? You know, if I use the cheapest, I'm going to be setting my products right at the bottom of the quality factor, you know, compared to everyone else's or compared to a lot of other people's, let's put it that way. Um, there are a lot of people using the lowest quality stuff and they're really struggling. Really struggling to make good products, really struggling, struggling to get repeat sales. So when it comes to costings, um, just think twice about looking for the cheapest products you can find. So try and get a better quality. We're in a luxury industry, so this is a, um, a luxury product that people don't have to buy, that they choose to buy. And when they choose to buy it, they're expecting a high quality uh, product, whether it be wax melt or candle. So when, if you're gonna be in this industry for the longer run and do well in it, try and think higher quality, higher price not lower quality, lower price, you know, it's, um, I'm going to do a separate video on that, so there's something really interesting to show you about the expectations, so there's two expectations, there's expectations of makers, so the manufacturers, like you guys watching this, and then there's the expectations of the consumer, so people buying your products, and it's very interesting to show you, I'll demonstrate it in, in, in the next video, of how they differ or can differ a lot if you really get it wrong. That, that, that'll be an interesting video so keep tuned for that one. I'll probably make that one my next video because it won't be that long to make that one. Um, and that will, I think, that will help I think give a better um, representation or understanding of how I'm trying to get across the costings because it can come across a little bit misunderstood that someone's telling you to spend more. You know that can always be a little bit like okay sort of thing you know as a as a person looking to spend money, um, especially as I as I own a um, supplies business, so Rusted Bond Candles, you know, I own the supplies business. Um, we only stock high quality products for the very reason that all the products in my company I use. So it's all like a dual factor there. I I buy the, the stock or have it manufactured for me to my specifications because I'm using it. And then now the sub business that's come about from that is the supplies business. You know, I offer it to you guys if you wish to buy it. But I wouldn't stock it if I wouldn't use it. So put it that way, you know. I've been in business for nine years now, so um, hopefully that sort of like helps to highlight good quality products is the way to go. Look, it's talking a little bit too long on this topic now, so we'll move on to the next one. Right, so the next one's a funny one. Um, Obviously these are just my opinions and things for you to take into account and um, gain a little bit of knowledge from and then go off and gain your own experience from doing your own research. So the next one to talk about is uh, beginner groups. So they are brilliant. I own and run probably I think it's the largest beginner group in the UK now. So I'm based in the UK and I own the Wax Melts and Candles Helpful Making Group UK. Um, I think we are 
the biggest now. It depends what time you're watching this video, but yeah, near enough the biggest, if not the biggest already. Um, and to take them with a pinch of salt, so this might seem a little bit uh, contradictive, but try not to spend too long in beginner groups. At the very start, they're brilliant, okay? You come in there, you learn, you get advice from other people. Now remember, they are beginner groups containing a lot of beginners. Some people are very chatty in nature, which is great. They, you know, gotta answer your questions. Now, you just gotta remember, am I getting good advice from these people? A lot of the time will be yes, you really are getting good advice. Sometimes you're gonna get bad advice. Now, as a beginner, you're not gonna understand what's good advice and bad advice. That's why I say, don't spend too long in beginner groups, you know. Start off there, gain some knowledge, do your testing yourself, test, 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 learn from your mistakes. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. But don't rely on getting answers always from beginner groups because it goes back to the fact that, let's say you've been testing for, and you've been testing really well for a few months, then you come across a problem and you go to the beginner groups and you seek an answer, but you get an answer that's bad a bad answer, you go off and play about with what they've said and you struggle even more and you get to go, you, you, you progress nowhere. Then you go back to the beginners group, you write the same question again, you get a different answer this time. First of all, you might think I wasn't told that the first time, but you go off and try it out. Now you might get stuck in that sort of cycle with bad advice. Not always, hopefully you get the right advice first of all, but this is a point to remember. Don't spend too long in beginner groups, you know, a few months, it's not going to take that long to, to gain, gain up the knowledge and then go off and progress yourself, you know, do our, find other avenues of research. YouTube, there's some amazing YouTube makers out there being um, given very helpful content. Now be careful with YouTube, there's a lot of YouTubers out there being YouTubers, meaning that they make their living from YouTube. They've got to make videos, you know, every few days. That that's the way they make their living. Now, the value in their videos can be very, very small, if non-existent. They're just talking about nothing. Hopefully, this video is not coming across that way. But um, as YouTubers, I don't class myself as a YouTuber. I'm here just to pass on knowledge. Um, but certain YouTubers, they produce really good-looking videos with little information in them. So try and find, there's very few out there, but try and find the YouTubers, so Rustic Barn Candles, my one, there's, um, oh, I can't remember, there's another guy's name who I used to watch at the start, he still makes videos now, not that often, but he's like me, videos sometimes now and then, but very good detail in the videos. Try and find those YouTubers who give loads of input, might waffle on for ages, but the detail you're getting in those videos is very good. Um, yeah, so... Take YouTubers with a pinch of salt, but um, yeah, you want informative information is what I'm trying to say. So the last point I'm going to talk about is where do you start in this industry? So that's probably a great place, whoever's watching this video, to learn from, to, you know, to have this question answered. Let's say the main two products is wax melts and candles. Now most people think about, I want to make candles. Um, and that's how I started. I started with candles, first of all. But I wish I started with wax melts first. Wax melts are so much easier to make. They're, they've got um, very few problems, very few things that can go wrong. I'm going to quickly say, if you get the wrong ingredients, you know, the cheapest stuff that I was talking about earlier on, many things can go wrong. But if you buy good quality ingredients, so rustic barn candles for example, wax and fragrance oils, brilliant, you're going to have very minimal issues, if not none, if you follow my videos. Um, but if you get the wrong ingredients, loads of things can go wrong. Very poor scent throw, wax with huge sink holes in them, uh, ugly looking wax when, it, when it's dried, you know, if the customer opens up it looks disgusting. So these are the problems that you can face with wrong ingredients, however, but with the two, wax melts or candles, Buying the right ingredients, start off with wax melts, do those for a few months or however long you want, and then, then move on to candles. Candles, there's so much more to understand and learn about. Um, 
wax again there's loads of wax out there many bad waxes and there's some good waxes try and you know again look for the better quality waxes um, but there's way more complicate compl compl complications with candles um, there's loads of different wicks wick materials wick types wick sizes so you have to match up the correct wick material correct wick size that's not the length but the thickness to your container so your container being the, the width of your container not the length because obviously your wick will burn down the full length so you need to match up the size and material to your well sorry you need to match up the size to your width of container and the material to your wax that you're going to be putting in the container okay different material wicks won't work in different waxes and also have different have problems with different fragrance oils um, Ah, oh, sorry. This is this will be the final point. This will be the one we end on. This is the most important one. I should have said it probably at the start. So hopefully, whoever's watched to the end, you're getting the most important point now. Fragrance oils is the number one product ingredient, rather, that goes into your scented products, whether it be your wax melts or candles. Again, there's so many cheap. Uh, I keep using the word cheap, but I, I prefer the word low quality. There's so many low quality fragrance source suppliers out there now that you are going to face huge problems in searching for the uh, fragrance source that give a strong scent throw. I do that with the word scent throw because that's a marketing word that's been put in a good few years ago from the wax companies. You know, throwing out the scent. There, there's no such thing as scent throw. It's scent throw comes from the wax companies where they promote their wax, waxes by saying, oh, this particular type of wax has a great scent throw. It's rubbish, all right? A wax, all, all that a wax does, it absorbs the oils and then releases the oil when it's melted. There's no such, scent throw is a marketing term, okay? So the oil, the fragrance oil, is the number one ingredient that you're gonna use in, in your scented products. Um, you want to find the best quality fragrance oil you can get your hands on. There's for someone taking this seriously to grow a serious business and l make a living from it, then don't look for the cheapest fragrance oils on the market. You'll be wasting your time. All right? Save your money, and for the price difference, it's minimal really. You want to use the best fragrance oils in terms of quality you can find, and they're not going to be the cheapest ones. Better quality costs a bit more. Um, Russet Barn Candles, again, all my oils I've had made for me. So many years ago, I used to import all my oils from abroad because the ones in the UK weren't good enough. No offence to any UK makers here. Then obviously Brexit came about and that, come, that then caused problems for me to get my oils imported. The costs were phenomenal, the, the increase in costs that I had to find a UK manufacturer to get them made for me. It took a long, long time to get a equally matching fragrance oil that I was using from abroad made in the UK. We've now done that um, with a UK manufacturer obviously so they're made in the UK now and the quality is, is exceptional. Um, I find it a bit difficult sometimes talking about my own products because it comes across quite marketing but as some of my customers or a lot of my customers do say the fragrance oils from Russell Bark Hands are probably the best fragrance oils you can buy for quality on the market in the UK right now. So there's no if you're gonna start off in this industry, why not buy the oils from Russet Barn Candles? I know that comes across quite markety and pushy towards my company, but if you're starting off first of all, try some oils from Russet Barn Candles, then try some oils from somewhere else. Do your comparisons on Centro, how how well the oils from uh, Russet Barn Candles is filling up the room and how well the other oils are filling the room. You will see the difference is quite unquestionable um, in quality. So back to the point of fragrance oils, there is a massive difference in quality from the low ones to the higher ones. You want to be looking for the best fragrance oils you can find because that is the ingredient that your customers smell. They don't smell the wax. So you're going to get a lot of people in the groups because they've learned from other beginners saying that you need to use a better quality wax. Well that might be true if you're using a terrible quality wax. But 
if you're just using the same fragrance oil, nothing's ever going to change. It doesn't really matter what wax you use. The fragrance oil is never going to get any better than what it is, you know. Poor quality fragrance oil is always going to be poor. Good quality fragrance oil is near enough always going to be good and it's always going to be a lot better than the poor quality fragrance oil. So, winding up this point, um, on quality of products there is a massive difference. Try and it's to your advantage to buy the better quality fragrance oils. I know you won't know initially what products are better than others until you sample them. So it's like a catch-22, you have to sample different ones and by that time you spend a lot of money. So that's another reason why it can get quite costly because you're searching around different suppliers. Rusted Barn Candles, start off with Rusted Barn Candles. You'll do really well from the start. And if you want to sample other stuff, then do so. But you won't be going wrong starting off with Rusted Barn Candles. Then you can compare the other qualities out there. Um, yeah, so I, I don't want this video to come across pushy as you know, go buy Rusted Barn Candles stuff. That's not the way. I am here to try and give you good information. Um, I don't make many videos. I haven't got the time to. Um, so busy making candles and stuff like that, wax melts and um, being a problem solver. I think that's probably, this will be the very last point that we end on. Running a business, a, a proper business, um, is all about solving problems. You need to be able to, able to handle stress. Um, problems are going to come up every week, whether it be with customers, with orders, with suppliers. Um, whatever it might be, it's going to be problematic. And it's your job as the business owner to solve these problems. Um, making the products is, is one, only one side of the business. Running the business is then a completely different side. I'll talk about that in another video because that's a huge topic in itself. But yeah, um, hopefully this video has been informative. Sorry to have waffled on a little bit. I've literally just thrown this video together. I was going to do a video about making candles. I've got an order for 100 candles going out to a, a shop that I was going to do. It's only a small order, but um, get those made up today. These are some unique size uh, candle glasses that I'm making specifically specifically for them. I don't normally stock these but it might be something I bring in now because people are wanting slightly smaller candles to get the price down a little bit. Um, so I've just thrown this, this video together. I was going to do a making video but I've abandoned that one out and I've just done this one. I hope you find it a bit more informative and helpful um, for you guys to think about the things I've said. Um, yeah, sorry to waffle on. I'm probably waffling on now so I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, I'm going to make that video that, that I said earlier on today about the expectations of makers and the expectations of customers in my next video. I might even get that one, that one made later today and put up in the next few days. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.